is the love you give to yourself going to make things more comfortable? No. No, it's not. Oh my God, I'm doing the I love you's and it's not becoming more comfortable. I know. Doing the I love you's, even though it can transform discomfort into comfort, that's not the point of it. Imagine a child. The child's screaming in pain and I'm loving it, but it's not stopping. I'm just going to put it down and walk away. (laughs) No. We hold the baby and we love it until it's done. And until it's done, we don't stop. Same rules apply. Matt, I did a few I love you's and it didn't make all my dreams come true. This doesn't work. (laughs) Oh, it works. It's just that the I love you's seem useless when using it as a way of getting something, as a means to an end. Oh, I don't like the way life is. I love you. I love you. Right? And what's funny is even the, even the ego can do I love you, but the ego's version of I love you is it will say I love you, but on the inside it's waiting for cha-ching, cha-ching, like a slot machine. I love you. Did it work? I love you. Did it work? I love you. Did it work? And the high road that masquerades as your highest pains, anxieties, and torments just waits and goes, not so fast. Not so fast. Because that's not approaching this with honor. The I love you's are powerful when you say, I'm not loving myself to change my experience, although if that happens, glory, hallelujah. I'm loving myself because I'm in hell and I deserve some damn support and these wind-up toys around me obviously don't know how to give me what I want, so I'm going to figure this crap out. That's, that's, it's real. It's real. It's emotional first aid. I need some support. I need someone to be here for me, and people seem to disappoint me, so why don't I start trying? I love you. And then the I love you is a fierce I love you that says, feel what you're feeling, May it change, it doesn't have to change. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm just so honestly seeing, oh my God, you're in so much pain. Let me give you the support that you deserve now more than ever before. Do you feel that authenticity? That's what whatever arises love that is. It's not, I tried to do the I love you's, my neighbor's dog kept barking, screw it. (laughs) Love is not a feeling you are waiting to embody. Love is not being emotionally high all the time. Love is the response of kindness, care, and compassion that you offer yourself and others throughout their highest triumphs or their most insurmountable moments of pain. Love is the response of greater support, not a high of any kind. Someone said to me once, I'm not feeling this love stuff. Well, love's not a feeling. Love's not a feeling. Love is the one who supports and nurtures the experiencer throughout the duration of any feeling, not any feeling in particular. When love is not a feeling, who can bump you out of it? To 
to the ego, love is just super duper arousal or hardcore preference. I would love if you would act this way, and since you're not, I despise you. Right. That's hardcore preference or super duper arousal. Oh my God, I'm not rolling around in ecstasy 24 hours a day. I must be disconnected from God. <laughs> no, you're just unaware of what love is. It's like people meet and they have a relationship, and in the beginning it's new, it's fresh, and you know. I'm like, and it, there's, it's like a euphoria. The person's brand new, and then sooner or later, that brand new character in your reality becomes you again. <laughs> right, you wake up, you turn, oh, you. <laughs> you again. And then the people go, oh, we're, we're, we're losing our love. No, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's always these, it's all different dynamics in the spiritual path. You can't oversimplify it. But love's not a feeling. Love is the harmony that either engulfs one heart or unites two hearts when either one or both are willing to serve the happiness of another without excluding themselves. Someone once asked me, do you feel love all the time? And I said, I feel life all the time. That's what I feel. I feel life all the time. And life can feel any which way it wants to feel with me. I have an open door policy with life. Do what you will, life. Take me, I'm yours. You get the first shot, life. Devour me whole, because when you're done, I'm devouring you. That's my relationship with life. someone enters my presence, they will be served with the highest integrity and they will be devoured by the precision of love. And being devoured by love liberates them from themselves. I feel love all the time. I feel great. I feel harmonious and it doesn't mean anything. I feel life all the time. And life doesn't feel any, anything in particular to me anymore. It's not a state of high or low. I don't feel that. I don't experience that anymore. Because the high road showed me the way to the degree that there is no other road but that in existence. In the beginning of your journey, there are many lanes to the highway. Further, further along the path, one road. One road, the high road. And what awakens a force of love that allows you to liberate all beings by devouring them with the love of your eternal light is surviving a life of life first devouring you. First stage of spiritual journey, life takes its best, sh best shot to devour you. You and your best, and in some inexplicable way, you survive life's devouring, and what's left is your highest qualities that says, now it's my turn to devour you, and I do it to liberate you in the name of love. That's the game we're playing, and it's real. It's very real. I do not make light of it. I am here to serve you all within it.
there's a fierceness already within you. That's what you're really afraid of, your own fierceness, because it's so powerful. On the surface, the fear is if I let this out, someone's going to be harmed. The truth is, if you let this out, your ego will be integrated. No one will be harmed. Everyone will be liberated. An entire world will explode into a trillion stars, reflecting back the magnificence of your being. And that's the best case scenario. 